Nicole, Nicole, let's wait. Father, let's just praise the Lord. Let's just thank Him for who He is. Father, we thank You this afternoon, we, this morning. We bless Your name. We give glory and honor unto You, O oh God. We love You, Father. We love You, O oh God, because You first loved us. Once we were not a people, Father, but now we are called Esther's, O oh God. Once we were without a name, O oh God, but we are called Esther's today, Father. Not because of what we have done, not because of who we are, but because of who you are, O oh God. Rika tena rishima ndere utsuma, tinokukuza ima ngwana ni anasi, murizi we upenyo, alfa ndi omega, makanaka mambo chesu, mangwana ni anasi, tora injimbo, nokuti makatida matitendera, matirangarira mangwana ni anobaba, kutitime pane ino njimbo, matirangarira chesu, matirangarira chesu, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Oh, yes. We serve a wonderful God, church. We serve a God who is good. But I'm going to excuse fashion this morning. I was telling my daughter, I say, this is going to have to come off at some point. So I'm going to take it off now. Just bear with me, yeah? Just one minute, I'll take this thing off. It's beautiful, isn't it? I'm looking beautiful, aren't I? I think mean, that was the whole point for you guys to see that I, I made a bit of effort. Amen. women of God. I'm greatly humbled to be standing here. I want to thank 
my mom Vami, I am very humbled, mom, and uh, I want to thank the God that you serve, the God that you listened to, uh, for us women here to be here and to be called Esthers. Amen. Just want to thank you and your team. Uh, you guys do an amazing job. And <laughs> if we had not answered the call of God, where would we be, some of us? If they hadn't answered the call of God, where would we be? Amen. I want to thank God for his word. I want to thank God for the theme that we have, restoring the cankered years. Amen. Restoring. And the good Zoretze and Guva Zakajkiwa, Nam Pedza Chose, Nam Teteni, Amen. You know, Mom, I wanted to say this. I wanted to share this with you and maybe with all of us. Last year, I lost my parents. Um, but before I lost my parents, my parents knew that I was a lover of God. I, I made no, no news about it. My parents knew. My parents knew. And every time I went home, I would preach Jesus to them. And the last time I went, before the very last time, I, I prayed a prayer with my parents. <laughs> I still remember I was sitting and I prayed. <laughs> I said, God, restore the years that the enemy has stolen. Restore what the canker worms have eaten. I prayed that prayer with my parents. Because once in their lifetime, they had separated. Amen. But we thank God because they came together in their latter years. And it was my prayer that God restores what the enemy had stolen from them. Amen. And I prayed that prayer for my parents. And I know God can restore because you know what? He says it in his word. Amen. So this morning we want to thank God for his word. I am a lover of the word of God and I believe strongly that what uh, Timothy says, that all scripture is God breathed. That is there to restore. To, to teach, to instruct, to, to, to correct, to, to lead us, to guide us in the path of righteousness. Amen. Amen. Unto the admonishing of men and women. Amen. In his body. Hallelujah. So anyway, without wasting much time, this morning we are going to go to the book of Joel. <laughs> Joel, where we have our theme. And Joel, we have been reading this and I'm sure by the time we go back home, we will have a memory verse. Hallelujah. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. I'd like to welcome all the pastors in the house. Um, I feel very, um, you know, if I say what I am thinking, I'm very humbled. Um, amongst giant, amen. Among what mom said yesterday, my soldier, amen. I'm humbled to be amongst them, amen. So, Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, reading from verse 24. Sorry. Reading from verse 24. I'm reading the New Living Translation. The threshing floors will again be piled high with grain, and the presses will overflow with new wine and, and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what, the loss, what you lost. To the swarming locusts, to the hopping locusts, to the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts, and the leaking locusts that we said yesterday. Amen. It was I, the Lord says, who sent this great destroying army amongst you. Amen. Now, I, uh, when I was given, when we were given that theme, I thought to myself, uh, I, can't, I think we can only do it justice to, to read what, what came before. Amen. <clears throat> So, as I was reading, and as the other preachers have rightly said, there is an issue where Judah, and in this case, I'm going to refer to him as Israel. Amen. We had sinned before God. 
he had he had done wrong before God. He had engaged himself in the things that the Lord had detested. Amen. And God had he was very angry. When you read the history, I think it is the, the grandmother was very vile. Amen. In terms of wickedness before the Lord. Amen. And the Lord was angry with it. That's what the word of God says. The Lord was angry with it. Amen. As we read from chapter 1, we hear how this locust destroyed everything that was in their way. Amen. Everything. The word of God says as they, as they came, there was the garden of Eden. It was like the garden of Eden before it. And after them, it was like a desert. That's what they did when the locusts came in. Amen. So when you hear that, you hear that's how they did it. Amen. They destroyed everything that was in their way. So I've, I was writing here and I was thinking, you know, when, when, when Moses was about to deliver the children of Israel from Egypt, there were many, many, many plagues that were, were given, isn't it? And I think the, the plague of the locust comes in as the seventh or eighth one. Amen. This is where, and it, to me, it, it made me realize how much Pharaoh had hardened his heart. Akin to the children of Israel, how they had hardened their hearts. God telling them over and over to repent, over and over to depart from your wicked ways. But they kept hardening their hearts. For how long, O Israel, shall you keep your hearts be hardened? Amen. For how long, O Easter, will you keep your hearts as hardened as a rock like that. Now God sees that the children of Israel are not relenting. Amen. They are not turning back. God realizes that Pharaoh is not giving his children back. And so he sends out locusts. Amen. He sends out a swarm of locusts. Because when you read, is it Exodus? The word of God says, because Pharaoh had hardened his heart. Amen. Children of God, when we are here gathered at meetings like this, I reckon or, or I beseech thee by the message of God that we do not harden our hearts. You know there was a preach, I think one of them, even mom said, for there to be restoration, there has got to be repentance. There has got to be a turn around for there to be, re, for there to be a restoration. There has got to be a turn around. There's got to be a, a, a softening of, God, of your heart for God to make a turn around. Because, listen Esther, listen what he says. Listen, verse 25. For the Lord says, I will give you back. Now this is New Living Translation. I would like any other version, please. Okay, okay, okay. Joel, Joel chapter 2. I think we're going to read King James Version. Oh my God, my God. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. It says, the Lord says, I will give you back what you lost. Now listen, Esther. The Lord is saying, I will. Meaning to say, he can. He's got the restoration there. It is already there. It is for him to just dispense. But it is for us to, read, to lighten our hearts. Oh my God. God is asking us not to harden our hearts. Because he says, restoration is here. I have got it. Revival is here. Last week we were talking about revival. A divine reset. He says it is here. I have got it. But you've got to repent. Oh Israel, do not let your heart be hardened. Amen. No, they need it. When you read Joel, it takes you through and God says to them, Mom was speaking about it this morning. Rend your heart. Rend your heart, not just your garments, because many a times we are just so used to coming with our garments and how beautiful we look, or how wonderful we look, or how wonderful we are singing. But God is asking you to rend your heart, to bring it, other versions say, bring it in pieces before God. He is looking after a heart that is broken and contrite. He is looking... The only way we can worship God, sisters, is worshiping in our, in spirit and in truth. The only way we can worship this Father, the only way we can get restoration, church, is by surrendering our hearts. Be broken, money. Be broken before 
Jesus, a broken heart, even David knew that. And they are broken and contrite heart, oh God, that is what you desire. Nothing else. Monica Sheena, no beautiful dresses. <laughs> oh my God, no beautiful dresses. Just your heart. Bring your heart to God. Bring your heart to Jesus. Bring your heart, Esther. Bring your heart to the good restoration. We want restoration in our families. We want restoration in our lives. We want restoration in our marriages. Unless you bring your heart, Esther, unless you render your heart, we are not talking about restoration. Because what we need first is a restoration here. And then, though what we need here is a rending of the heart. And then here, restoration, God says, I will. <laughs> no, he didn't say, I might. He said, and I will. And I will. It is guaranteed, Esther. It is there for the taking. It is ours. But he says, in the, you must render your heart. You must bring your heart. It must be broken. Not just once broken, but broken in pieces. Bring it before me. There is nothing with that. Bring your heart here. No matter what, even if the, if the husband has done things, bring your heart. Because remember, Esther, it is only you and God. When we are giving an account, the word of God says at one point, we are going to give an account. When we are giving an account, there is not going to be a time when I say, ah, it was love more, Mwari. it was love more. No, me and my heart, he's going to ask me, have you had a broken heart? Have you brought your heart to me? <laughs> but remember, but they're just an excuse, Askana. These husbands are just an excuse. We must not make them an excuse. We must worship God in spirit and in truth. And God is looking for an Esther like that. In Zwayas Kana. Tunamuka Kusen Redue. Now five Mamba Kweza Trinketa Muka. Bamu Wato Muka Elia. They wake up even earlier. Kuzotu so mira uchiti. Ah, my husband, oh God. My husband, father. My children were not listening. No, 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 that is no excuse, Esther. Bring your heart. Bring your heart. Broken as it is, bring it. Bring, bring it, bring it. When you bring it to Jesus, <laughs> He will restore us, man. He will restore us, ladies. He will restore. Restoration. Restoration is about being given back what was yours and it was taken away. But as he restores a double fold, not just once, like Job, a bit like Job. Do you know the man Job? It's like Job. The word of God says, and God restored to him. <laughs> God restored to him. Amen. When you read the Bible, it says, he had more than double what he had. Amen. That is restoration. Amen. In India, sometimes look at it actually, and I think it is mercy. It is mercy. Because when you read the children of Israel, I'm doing what I want. He is saying, God is saying, He is saying, what is done in the hidden, He sees it all. And He is calling us to repent, Esther. To repent. You know, this restoration, as I was thinking of it, as I was looking at it, restoration calls, there is a certain kind of positioning that we are called to. We've got to take a certain position. We've, there's got, we've got to align ourselves with this. It's alignment. And it's alignment with restoration. Come for me, Rokago. This girl wants restoration. Come tell me, Rokago. It will show me that this girl wants restoration. Come in to Rokako. Then we come tell you Rokako. Can I rush it out? By the way, Muna are going to talk restoration. Somebody is looking for restoration. You know what? Mama, I 
was blessed yesterday by Tama. You know, when you hear what Tama did, she was sent back home. Believe you me, Tama didn't ignore that. Had she not thought about it and thought about it, she would not even have even heard that her father-in-law was coming. Amen. But it was playing in her head. It was there right in front of her. It was there. What is in right in front of you, Esther? What are you thinking, Esther? What is right at your forehead? What are you thinking of, Esther? What is on your mind, Esther? Because Tama, I tell you, Tama, Tama was thinking good Judah. <laughs> Judah must be restored. The scepter is in Judah. Who will? She was thinking about that. When you read that passage that was read, it says, after a long time, Judah's wife died. A long time is a long time. <laughs> when the Bible says it, a long time. How long? God give us the spirit of tenacity, the spirit to carry on in hard times. She was there thinking, oh my God, oh my God, the canker worms have really taken control. Oh my God, the licking locusts are licking me and the hopping locusts have hopped over me. She was thinking of that, but also at the back of her mind, she was saying, oh God, the scepter must be restored, oh God. She kept her ears open as she was watching and praying. <laughs> she was watching and praying. The scepter is to be restored in this house. I am here. I am here. You know the word of God says he is looking for laborers in his vineyard. Let's pray for those laborers. Sometimes we pray. You are the laborer of today, my sister. You are supposed to be watching and praying so that the scepter should be restored in the house. So that in the name of Jesus is exalted, Charity Girarama. Could it Girarama Panika Pano? Only Jesus to be exalted. No matter what is around us, no matter how many canker worms are eating us, we must stand positioned, eager, and awaiting restoration. At the same time, whilst I'm pressing on towards the mark. Hallelujah, Esther. Our position is very important. Our mindset is very important. We saw Tama yesterday. She knew, she knew what was expected of her. So she knew the promises of God. How many promises do we know, Esther? How many promises of God do we know? Okay, wow. which part of the Bible do you know? Amen. Unless we read his word, we cannot stay. Unless we read, we don't have the spirit of staying. And I pray, oh God, that when the canker worms keep coming before your restoration, give me the spirit to stay, oh God, to stay, to keep watch and pray. You know, and the only way, I can go and ask us Derek in a, he was waiting for the rains to come. Morishina, the account to two Marishima and the real summa, the Akashima and the real ten. He was waiting for the rains to come. He was waiting for revival to come. Amen. He was waiting for revival to come. And he prayed. The word of God says, and he kept his set. And he had his, and he was praying. And he prayed. And he watched. And he watched. And he prayed. And he prayed. And he prayed. And he still watched. And he watched. There was nothing. God give us the staying power to stay in prayer. God give us the staying power to stay your God. I know restoration is coming. Even if kanga worms are eating me, I know restoration is coming because God said, I will restore you. I will restore you. I will restore what the kanga worms have taken. I will restore what they have eaten, 
God, give me the power to stay. The staying power, God, Rikashima, Ritena, Ritena. God, give us the staying power. Oh my God. Even Jesus said, Oh, Esther's, 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 Esther's. The world you are in has got many challenges. It's got things, tribulations. Maybe you would have said cankerworms, mom. You would have said cankerworms and the jumping locust. You would have said that. But he says, fear not, Lisa. Fear not. For I have overcome. So stay. Have the staying spirit. The staying power. Stay there, Lisa. Stay there. Because restoration is coming. <laughs> he is, he, it's, it's not a maybe it's coming. It is coming, Esther. It is coming. It is coming, Askana. It's coming. To me, Mark, it's coming. Restore It's coming. It's how we choose to take it. Is it mine or is it yours? <laughs> is it for, it's for the taking. You either take it or you leave it. Amen. The choice is ours. Is it there for the taking? Restoration is there. But I said it's positioning. Amen. The mindset. What am I thinking of? Yes, I'm surrounded by canker worms and everything. But what am I thinking of? Because we heard Tama was thinking about what is happening. What's going to happen to the family of Judah. Amen. And she, you know, when you were preaching, I was reminded. There's, there's this scripture in the word of God that says, be wise as serpents. You know that scripture? Be, be wise, be gentle as a dove, but be wise. You know, we need to have all that to assess the situation so that the enemy doesn't take advantage of us. Amen. To assess and see, to keep praying, to, to pray, to, to look at the city. Oh, maybe I should pray here. Or maybe, ah, let me run. Let me run to a sister. Amen. We have to be wise. Amen. As a serpent, as evil as it is, Jesus told us to be like it in one way or the other. There are characteristics about it that, 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 that we need to have in us. Amen. So, so Tama knew. She, I, she, she lived that scripture before it was even. Amen. She lived it. She thought, oh, to myself, unless I do something, Judah is going to die with no one. I need to have Perez here with me. I need to have the line so, lineage should be sorted. What do I do? She prayed, she waited. She prayed, she waited. Then she heard. <laughs> she heard the father-in-law is coming. The father-in-law is coming. Let us not be preoccupied by the things of this world. Matthew says the things of this world can, can, can smother the word of God. The things of this world can take over the word of God. So much that we forget the promises of God. So much that we forget that even though I'm suffering now, God says restoration is due. It's pending as it's dependent on you, how you are standing. Hallelujah. 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 God give us the staying power to stay there, to stay there and keep praying and keep looking and keep praying and keep looking. See, when I was reading this word, I, I said to myself, but why, oh God? But why? Because one of the versions, it came with, it came with the word compensate. It, it, it says, I will compensate. Amen. See? If we all know about the Hillsborough incident and all those things that happened, those people were compensated, amen, because something went wrong in the system, right? And God and, and the government compensated them, right? Now, when you look, it was, so it would have been the fault of the government who then compensated, right? But when you look at this scenario that's here, I, I, listen, Esther, this one. God says, I'm going to compensate to a hard-hearted, stiff-necked people. But he still says, I will compensate. I will give you double. I, 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 will, I will give you the restoration. He's saying that to a stiff-necked people. He has not done anything wrong. Actually, these people are, 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 are worthy to be cast out. I asked myself, but why God? Why? Why do you have to compensate? Okay, okay, maybe you can just give them what they had. No, compensation is beyond. It goes beyond just what they had. Compa it's messy, girls. It's messy. 
It's mercy. The word of God says his mercies are new every morning. Every no, it was not just it was not just the children of Israel. To us here, his mercies are new. We make a mistake yesterday. There is an issue of repentance, a positioning. We've got to repent. And his mercies are there for the taking. We are restored. We are compensated by God. <laughs> to be compensated by the King of Kings, the one who holds the world, everything in it is his. He is there to compensate you. Father, I ask that you may help us. Help us, Father, to realize what kind of a God you are to us. We are undeserving of your love and your mercies. We are undeserving of them, oh God. But we thank you for giving them to us. Thank you for making them available to us. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So Jesus is there, amen. He's there. His mercies are new every day. He's there, amen. But it's calling us to a certain position, Esther. If anything, you must know. If we need restoration, if we need a divine reset, if we need revival, if we need that, we've got to position ourselves. We've got to align ourselves with the word of God. Amen. And the word of God calls for, for repentance. He's, he's asking in revelations, where is your first love, Esther? Where is your first love? That love, that love, where is it? Go back to the first love. <laughs> Go back to it. And I will. It's not like he's going to, he might think of it. When you go there, I will see if, uh, if you can, if I can, if I can, if I can restore you or not. No, 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 no. He says, and I will restore you. And I will restore you. No matter what has happened, he will restore. No matter what we have been through, he will restore us. But where are you standing? Amen. Where are you standing this afternoon, this morning? God is asking us to position ourselves in a place of repentance. And when we have repented, and when he has restored, because he is going to restore, <laughs> he will. It's a given. When, see, do you believe? All things are possible. The whole point is about you believing in that word. You either believe it or you don't. So when you believe it, you live in the promises. And if you don't, it's another story. You're just saying, see, I, I say to myself, my children must see God. Not just in word here. They must see God. And so I take God and I say, God, my children must see me. What I confess, they must see it coming through. And what I believe, they must see it walking on two legs. Amen. So what are you believing? <laughs> because I am believing in restoration. Because I am taking God on his word. He is faithful unto his word. And see, he opens his eyes and his ears, everything about him, to ensure that word is going to return to him fulfilled. Amen. He is, whether it is this morning or tomorrow morning or this evening, he is restoring people. Some were restored yesterday. Some are being restored now. Amen. It's, it's, it's for us to believe what he says. And when we have believed, it is about living a life that pleases him. No, Paul says, let us not live our life as enemies of the cross, but let us live a life, a lifestyle of worship, a lifestyle with a broken heart, a lifestyle that renders its heart to God. Not just once, not just twice, but it's a daily, it's a lifestyle, it's a daily thing, Esther. You know, when we come on the platform and we confess our sins, we do that every day. And we shall do that until Christ comes back. Mama was saying this morning, where is the true confession? Because sometimes we do it just by the dress, just by the book we do confess. But where is the heart? Because when there is true confession, you know what? God steps in and he walks and he shows himself. He does. 
Because what separates us from God is sin. Listen to me, Esther. Listen to me. God is going to restore what the enemy has taken. Whether it is being in marriage, whether it be in, 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 in our spiritual journey, there might have been a hiccup along the way, and you are not where you know you should be with the Lord. God is going to restore that. And actually, you know what? When restoration comes, it's like a fast forward button has been pressed by God. He will restore even what you, you did not have. He will take you to the place where you are supposed to be. And everybody you will be wondering what happened we were with here we were with her here we used to play with her what happened God restores and presses fast forward button to where you are supposed to be but do you believe that do you believe that because all things <laughs> the word of God says all things are possible if only we believe it Sagapanapa, the word is going to be preached over and over. The question is not the word is being is it not being preached, Mama? The question is, are we believing the word? Are we believing it? <laughs> this afternoon, this morning, are we believing God? He says He will restore. I will restore. I want to read. I want us to read. You know, I, I want us to read Deuteronomy chapter seven. Deuteronomy chapter seven. Father, I thank you this morning. I bless your name. This God we worship is a covenant-keeping God. See, there is nothing special about Judah, really. There was nothing special about Israel, really. And there is nothing special about Margaret at the end of the day when you look at it. There are more beautiful women out there than me. There are more intelligent women out there than me. There are people that are well built, better looking in every humanly standard looking at them. But may some people might, but why here? Why? Why Judah? Why Judah? Because we serve a covenant keeping God. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 7. I would, I would like to read it from the top, from the top. But there are passages that I want us to just capture. The privileges of holiness. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. Actually, I want to read from Amplified Version this morning. So, when the Lord your God brings you into the land which you are entering to possess, that's Deuteronomy chapter 7, reading from verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you are entering to possess and has plucked away many nations before you, so he plucked the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. These armies, the word of God says, were greater and mightier than Israel. Amen. And when the Lord your God gives them over to you and you smite them, then you must utterly destroy them. Amen. You make no covenant with them or show no mercy to them. Amen. See, these enemies resemble the things of the world. We are in this world, Esther, but we are not of the world. So as the Lord is saying to Israel, you need to smite them and completely destroy them. It's calling us to live a life that does not go. We are not to live a life here and then when we think, oh, it's really wonderful to sing in the presence, then you come to them. No, 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 no. If you are going to be in the presence and worship, it's everything about you. And that life is living sorry praise and worship I don't know what's happening but we thank God because I'm a worshiper as well and God calls us to holiness amen God calls us to an upright living amen because we are here as pastors as well we need to stand here in holiness in holiness we should not be engaged Paul says as a soldier working for the Lord we should not be engaged in civilian affairs amen we should not be engaged in the the civilians amen we should be wholly upright amen completely having destroyed the enemy completely having destroyed anything to do with the world amen completely amen so here it says utterly destroy them make sure no co you have no covenant with them no agreement where the enemy is going to say ah, i've made a covenant with you remember maggie no covenant with the world 
utterly destroy any covenants that have been made without me knowing. I destroy them in the name and the blood of Jesus Christ. Any covenants that have been made against my family, my life, my livelihood, I destroy them. I bring them down this morning in the mighty name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus Christ. I break down every covenant this morning and show no mercy to the enemy. <laughs> show no mercy. Amen. Verse 3 says, you shall not make marriages with them. Your daughter shall not give in to their sons, nor shall their daughters to your sons. Amen. So no engagement whatsoever with the world. First voice says, for they will turn away your sons from following me. They will, they, and they, that they may serve the other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and he will destroy you quickly. Amen. Sorry, that's my phone. And he will destroy you quickly. Verse 5. But thus shall you deal with them. You shall break down their altars and dash in pieces their pillars and you down their Asherim, the symbols of the goddess of Asherah, and burn their graven images with fire. Amen. So those are the instructions that Israel was given by God. Amen. So utterly destroy the world, Esther. Utterly. Don't have anything to do with the world. We are in it, but we are not for it. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Amen. We, are tre we treat ourselves as foreigners in this land. We treat ourselves as foreigners who are looking for a land, a land that was prepared somewhere. Jesus says, I am going to prepare a place for you so that where you are, there you, you will be with me. So we live like foreigners who are waiting for our real home that the master has gone to prepare. So here on earth, we engage with no enemy. We engage in no civilian affairs. We engage in nothing to do with the world. We utterly destroy them amen intentionally destroy them intentionally that shows you are positioned right you intentionally destroy everything around you you are positioned eagerly waiting and praying maybe Judah might come he says he's coming restoration is coming so I wait I'm positioned I wait I wait he's going to prepare a place for me I'm waiting He's coming. He is coming. He is coming. Jesus is coming back. The church needs to know that. He's coming to get a bride. Restoration is coming. It is coming. The Son of God is going to restore the kingdom to the Father. And He is taking His bride. And the bride must be ready, church. Esther, you are the bride. You must be ready. Keep watch and pray. The word of God says the rains are coming. So you keep watch and you pray. Keep watch and you pray, Esther. Keep watch and you pray. So, so my question to God was... So why, oh God, why do you have to compensate? Why do, okay, I understand you are, you are a loving God. Just give them, okay, what they have, what they had. Ooh. Verse 6. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. For you are a holy and set apart people. <laughs> you are a holy and set apart people. A people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you, Esther, to be a special people to himself. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, he has chosen you and you and you and you and me to be his special people. We are a royal priesthood. We are called to live like a priest here on earth. Amen. We are called to live as if Jesus is coming tomorrow, as if Jesus is coming just now. Amen. We are called to be his special people amongst the many people of the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you and choose you because you were more, more in number than any other people. For actually, you were the fewest of them all. And in my own version, I say, the Lord did not choose you because you were any better than anyone out of there. But it was because the Lord loves you. Actually, when you look at yourself, like Paul says, I was the worst among the sinners. Amen. 
So it is nothing about who we are that we are chosen. It's nothing about who we are or what we have done. Hallelujah. Verse 8. But because the Lord loves you, I have loved you, O Israel. I have called you by name. I have loved you, O Esther. I have called you by name. For such a time as this, I have called you. I have loved you. The word of God says, because the Lord loves you and because he would keep the oath which he is sown with your forefathers. Other versions says, because he is a covenant keeping God. Because he has made a covenant with your fathers. And we are the inheritance of our Abraham, amen. We stand in the faith like Abraham. So we are in inherit we inherit the promises of God because those promises come into Abraham and we fall in him. Amen. Hallelujah. It's nothing about what we have done, but just because he loved us. The word of God says, is it in Ephesians where it says, and he lavished his mercies on us. Lavished is to throw, to, to, to ignorantly throw, to say, whoever catches, whoever will have, will have as plenty as they want. Lavishly put upon us the love of God. So it's nothing about who we are. It's all about who he is and what he has promised. And here he is promising that I will restore. And so he will restore. Hallelujah. Nothing about us, all about him. Let's stand on our feet this afternoon. We pray, God, help me. God, help us to be positioned. God, help me. We are Esther positioned. Where are you positioned? Are you positioned where God wants you to be? Let's just cry unto the Lord this afternoon. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We pray, oh Father, may our hearts, oh God, and our minds worship you, oh God, intentionally, Father. May we give our everything unto you. May we give our everything, our hearts, our minds, our everything belongs to you, oh Father. So we surrender, oh God, that you, oh Father, may restore because you are a covenant keeping God. And you said you are going to restore. And we believe it, Father, that you will restore us this afternoon, oh God, have your way. Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name let's pray Esther let's cry to him let's cry as long as it is today God hears us let's call unto him he who hears us he who sees a rendered heart he who sees the heart that is broken in pieces he who is positioned and longing to have God restore father this afternoon this morning have your way Holy Spirit, give us a believing heart. Give us a heart that is believing in you. Ria Kashima, Ria Tete. Father, we give you all the glory, oh God, because you are the restorer, oh Father. We are coming with our hearts to you, Jesus. We are surrendering our hearts to you, God. A broken heart is what we are bringing before you, oh God. We are coming with everything within us, oh God. Saying, oh Father, take over, oh Father. Guide our hearts, guide our souls, oh Father. So that we do in accordance as your will. That we position ourselves to receive that restoration, uh, to receive that restoration, to receive that restoration. Daily I shall worship thee, Lamb of God, Where? 
worship thee and I will love you. I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you. I will love you. I will love you, Lord, my strength. Forever, all my days. 